This is the Ecta, a 300,000 ton tanker vessel built in 1995 to carry oil around the world. It was one of the largest of its kind when it first set sail. The Ecta sailed under several different names and flags throughout its 22 years of service, and in 2017 this massive vessel set out on its final voyage to one of the largest shipbreaking yards in the world. Around 90% of the world's goods are transported by sea, and there are nearly 100,000 large-scale commercial vessels sailing the world's oceans, from oil tankers and cargo ships to fishing vessels and car carriers. Once a ship reaches the end of its operational life, it can be sent to a shipbreaking yard to be broken down and recycled. We try and track every vessel that ends up um, at a um, breaking yard, and what we've seen is that approximately 90% of the tonnage uh, ends up on only three beaches in South Asia, so one in India, one in Bangladesh, and one in Pakistan. The Ekta ended up here, in Shittagong, a port city on the southeastern coast of Bangladesh, home to one of the world's three largest shipbreaking yards. Approximately six to 700 vessels are sold to the beaching yards annually. And they usually sell them via scrap dealers that are known as cash buyers that purchase the vessel's cash from the ship owner, often change the flag of the ship, change the crew of the ship, change the registration of the ship, and bring the vessels to one of the three uh, beaches in South Asia. These are 12 kilometer long beach stretches with a huge tidal range, and the vessels run up during high tide and broken down. During low tide, the larger commercial vessels will end up at these beaching yards and you'll have tankers, cruise ships, military vessels, you'll even have floating platforms. And they contain large amounts of steel which is uh, good to recycle. So they are usually sold and then taken apart for the steel to be used in construction work or, or in uh, smelting uh, to create new new pieces of, of iron. Shipbreaking is a largely sustainable industry, but without the proper equipment or enforcement of regulations, the industry can have negative effects on both the workers and the surrounding environment. Ships can contain a number of hazardous materials, such as waste oils, heavy metals, and even asbestos. The safest way to recycle a ship is in a dry dock, where the hazardous materials can be easily contained. But this method is expensive, and there are very few dry docks equipped for shipbreaking. Another method of recycling, which is popular in Turkey and other countries, is the landing or slipway breaking method, where ships are partially landed on shore and broken up from the top down. In this method, the hull of the ship itself prevents toxic materials from entering the environment. The most common method of ship breaking, though, is beaching. It's the preferred method in India, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. And experts say beaching is where they see the greatest environmental and human impact. The workers in all three countries are, are internal migrant workers that come from northern regions, poorer regions where there is a lack of employment and they are often contracted on a daily basis, they work in different facilities, they will lack training, they will need to purchase their own protective equipment in some yards and not have the money to do that. And in Bangladesh we've seen that approximately 13% of the workforce are underage, so under 18 teenagers. And this is illegal according to also Bangladesh national law because it's considered a heavy and hazardous industry where uh, under 18 should not be working. But these have been employed uh, and often during night shifts, which is even riskier than, than working during the day to avoid um, labor inspectors. It would take uh, everything from four to six months, maybe longer, to, to take the vessel apart. There are many causes of accidents at the yard. In the last six months, we've been able to document uh, at least 11 workers that have lost their lives at the beaching yards. But we believe that these numbers do not reflect the entire picture. 
as the fatalities are seldom recorded or, or made uh, um, available publicly, the information about accidents. And it doesn't uh, count, of course, the numerous workers that become sick and die of, of cancer years after having worked at the arts. South Asia isn't the only region of the world where ships are recycled. The European Union keeps a list of ship recycling facilities that it's determined meet high safety and environmental standards. So when, when the ship arrives in the yard, the first thing we do is the pre-cleaning. So that's removal of um, all hazardous materials, in um, uh, all the accommodation, wood paneling, furniture, just name it. After that, we got a steel hull. Before that, we do all the, the asbestos removal. Once the asbestos is removed, then we start cutting up of the superstructure, removing of engine rooms, all the engines, all, all the oars, etc. The remaining hull is pulled on a slipway and is just cut up in, in smaller pieces with hydraulic pincers and, and mobile cranes. At the bottom of the slipway, you've got a gully. So would there be anything left in, inside the hull? It's catch up in the gully and then uh, treated further downwards in, in uh, the water treatment system. When you start cutting down a ship, you're always bound to be at two, three, four meters high. So every opening, we got fences all around. All the guys have got falling gear with uh, lifelines and all that sort of thing. So today, all, all the arts are really anxious to get to get more vessels in. More than 20 cruise vessels I went for recycling the last six months, and not. So one single vessel ended up in Europe. <laughs> so with a number of cleaner, safer shipbreaking yards available, why don't ship owners send their vessels to Europe? The vessels are sold per, per ton, and in South Asia right now, a ship owner can earn up to $400 per ton, whilst in a more um, sustainable facility in the US or in, in Europe, and the recycling yard would be able to pay 100 to 150 dollars per ton. Europe is the biggest net exporter of scrap steel. South Asia is a big net importer of scrap steel, as is Turkey. So the countries that recycle steel do not recycle them because it's a, a kind of an attractive industry. It is just that they need for, for the steel primarily. Then they make great use of all second-hand machinery and all kinds of materials. In Europe, you wouldn't use a second-hand pump that's been on a ship for 20 years. In India, they do, and they take the generators and run villages, electricity for villages. To recycle ships in Europe doesn't make at all economic sense. And the yards that are exist in Europe take small ships and take ships that are kind of need to be recycled and cannot travel a long distance. Despite the poor working conditions in some of the yards of South Asia, the region has seen some improvement. In addition, international legislation such as the Hong Kong Convention for the Safe and Environmentally Sound Recycling of Ships, which was adopted in 2009 but has not yet entered into force, has the potential to dramatically improve standards in yards around the world. The convention uh, is setting an international set of regulations that govern what materials are allowed on the ship, the convention requires that uh, recycling yards follow certain norms and has uh, requirements for uh, safety, environmental protection, training of workers, emergency response. The major delay is because uh, countries who have significant recycling industries uh, have to be sure the yards that are located in their country are capable of following the requirements. Countries where most of the ships are registered, again, have very little to worry because uh, requirements on ship owners are quite reasonable to follow and uh, reasonable to police. So at the moment, uh, the, the convention would enter into force if either China or Bangladesh uh, ratifies the convention. When I started working, I honestly did not think 
that it would be necessary to still work on this issue 15 years on. But the shipping industry has proven to be extremely conservative and very close to its uh, money. So they are not willing to give up the extra profit they're currently earning on, on exploiting workers and the environment in South Asia. International waste law forbids the export of hazardous waste from developed to developing countries. And what we're seeing with the shipbreaking yards is a massive uh, disrespect of international law. More companies are adopting sustainable policies. I'm seeing enforcement authorities bringing criminal charges against ship owners that are attempting to circumvent or have circumvented the legislation. And because there is an increased focus on circular economy and green deals. So I do believe that there is a positive future for sustainable recycling at proper facilities.